So as of this point, we now know how to find zeros from a graph. We find the x-intercepts. We know how to find zeros from intercept form, both in the simple case where the coefficients of x are 1, and then when it gets a little bit more complicated and we have non-1 coefficients. The next thing we need to discuss at the top of the next page, finding zeros from standard form. Uh, as I mentioned on the previous page, intercept form is definitely the easiest to deal with when finding zeros, especially the coefficient of one case, although uh, as you also saw, finding zeros from the graph of a function is extremely easy too. Standard form presents a little bit of a difficulty. Um, we're going to actually have to do quite a bit of work to find the zeros from standard form. There are some things that we're going to discuss later some things we can memorize that might help us find the zeros from standard form without doing a ton of work. But what we have to talk about right now is factoring. We have to talk about how we get standard form converted into intercept form. So first of all, let me back up here. Remember, standard form was that f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. I did mention before that that tends to be the form that students are most familiar with when it comes to quadratics. What we can do if we're given standard form and we need the zeros, let's say we don't have a graph, let's say we're not given intercept form, well, what we can do is we can convert standard form to intercept form by factoring. Now, many juniors, many seniors, even most sophomores have methods for converting standard form to intercept or factored form. If you have a method that works for you, no matter how complicated the quadratic gets, then just go ahead and use that method. I would, however, recommend watching the method that we go through here, which most students will know as a factoring by grouping method. That's uh, what we are about to discuss. This method tends to be reasonably straightforward, reasonably efficient. I will say that the vast majority of the quadratics that you might have to factor on this test are going to be fairly simple. So you might see stuff like x squared minus, uh, let's do, uh, let's just do minus x minus 20. And let's say this were a quadratic function and let's say you had to find the zeros. Most students, by the time their juniors and seniors can look at this and by a little bit of trial and error figure out that okay you need you need these two last numbers when you when you foil these two factors out we're going to talk about foiling later although again most people should be familiar with that term foil if i want to get a negative 20 i need something like a 20 and a 1 or a 10 and a 2 or a 5 and a 4 but i also need those two values here when everything is all foiled out to produce this negative one in front of the x and of course the uh, factors of 20 that will produce a a one or a negative one will be five and four we need to produce a negative 20 so one of these has to be negative one has to be positive in order to get that negative one we're clearly looking at the case where we have uh, negative five and positive four and indeed x minus 5, x plus 4 is what this standard form quadratic factors into. And if I foil this back through, I get x squared plus 4x, x squared plus 4x, minus 5x, minus 20. And of course, plus 4x minus 5x is negative 1x. That's 4 minus 5 is negative 1. This is just, you know, the standard trial and error or guess and check or visual examination method. And this method is going to be fine in the vast majority of cases where you might want to factor a standard form quadratic. However, again, it might be good to know a more robust, more systematic way of factoring quadratics just in case you get a, a quadratic that is a little bit more complicated, a little bit messier. So, how are we going to do this? How are we going to factor a standard form quadratic and convert it into factored or intercept form? Well, first of all, we always want to make sure our equation is in pure standard form where we have all of our quadratic, our linear, our constant quadratic, linear, constant terms on one side and a zero on the other. In other words, we have the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So if I want to do that with this example here, I am simply going to take that 40 from both sides and I am going to get x squared minus 4x minus 40 equals 0 and now I have my equation in 
standard form, pure standard form. Next step, if there are any factors common to all of the terms, I've got three terms here, this is known as a trinomial, I do have something common to all these terms. I have a four and I believe that's it. I don't have x's common to all three. I don't have anything bigger than four common to all three. So I'm gonna factor out a four and what I'm going to be left with inside is 2x squared minus x minus 10. I do, after factoring like to quickly run through with a little bit of distribution to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Four times 2x squared is 8x squared. Four times negative x is negative 4x. Four times negative 10 is negative 40. I got everything perfectly fine. I'm going to then list the values of a, b, and c in the simplified or factored quadratic that I've made here. So a is going to be two. That is the coefficient in front of the quadratic term. B is the coefficient in front of the linear term, and then that of course is a negative one here. And the C is the constant term here, that's negative 10. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw an X. Drawing the X isn't absolutely necessary, but it's fun to draw a big X, so I'm gonna do that. In the top quadrant up here, I'm going to write the product, write the product of A and C. The product of two and negative 10 is negative 20. And in the bottom quadrant down here, I'm gonna write the value of B, which is negative one. My next step is to list all the pairs of factors of AC and find the pair that when added, give me B. That is sort of what we were doing in the little example that I did up here, you will recall. So I'm gonna list my factors of 20. I'm not gonna worry about the negative right now. One and 20, two and 10, uh, three no, four and five, five and four, uh, as soon as I reach a number in that first column that I've already listed in the second column, I know I'm done. So here are my factors of 20. And of course, just like in the example I gave you, um, the four and the five is the pair that is gonna multiply to 20 and somehow give me that negative one. I do have to figure out what the signs will need to be. In this case, same as the example above. I have a negative five and a positive four. So I have written, I'm on step five here, I have written those factors in the left and right quadrants, but what I wanna now do is I wanna put an X after each of those. So negative five X plus four X. Now what I am going to do is I'm gonna rewrite the quadratic that resulted after step two, that was this quadratic in here. I'm gonna rewrite that, but I'm gonna rewrite the middle term, the BX term, in terms of these two, I'm gonna sort of break that negative one into a negative five X plus a four X. Negative one X is gonna become negative five X plus four X. So two X squared minus five X plus four X minus the 10. Uh, if I wanna put the four out here, it's actually not a bad idea to do that just in case, just so we don't drop it. I do remind you in a later step to make sure you throw back in that number that you had factored out in uh, step two. So now what I'm gonna do with this stuff in here is I'm going to, uh, this is step seven, I'm gonna factor the first two terms and the last two terms separately. So I'm going to look for something that is common to two X squared and five X, and of course that's just an X. So here's what I have. I'm going to pull that X out. So X times two X, oops, two X, minus five again, just to distribute uh, x to two x, that gives me the two x squared x to negative five, that gives me the negative five x. And from the four x minus 10, what can I pull out there? I can pull out a two. So I'm gonna pull out a two, and inside I'm going to have two x minus five. I'm gonna write the rest of my equation there. So again, I pulled an X out of the first two terms, out of these two terms. I pulled a two out of these two terms and I'm left with this. Now, if you have done everything correctly up until this point, what you will always see is you will always see a common factor appear. So I have X times two X minus five and two times two X minus five. I can pull that two X minus five out of those two terms. So if I pull a two X minus five out, what I am left with is x plus two, right? Because if I distribute this two x minus five to each of these terms, I will just end up with what I had up here. That two x minus five is just, you could just think of it as like an n. 
I'm just pulling that n out. This is xn plus 2n. If I pull the n out, I would get n times x plus 2. Well, there's the n. There's the x plus 2. So now what I have is I have this, and that's it. I'm done. That is my uh, final factored or intercept form equation. Now what I might want to do, as I've said several times, is I might want to distribute everything through. So I'm going to FOIL this. So that's 2x times x, that's 2x squared. 2x times 2, that's 4x. Negative 5 times x, that's negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2, that's negative 10. Still have the 4 out there. Let me combine these two terms. So that's 2x squared minus x minus 10. Everything's looking good so far. Put that 4 back in, I get 8x squared minus 4x minus 40. Is that what I had at the very beginning? Yes, it is. Uh, pretty much after the first step, that's what I had. Uh, I could even rewrite this as that plus 40 plus 40. And then, of course, I have exactly what I started with. So again, what you want to do is factor out anything that's common to all three terms. Look at what trinomial results. Write your A, B, and your C. Draw your X. Get your A, C up at the top. Get your B down at the bottom. Find the two factors of the A, C product that will add or subtract to give you B. Rewrite the middle term as a sum or difference of the two items in the left and right quadrants of the X. And then factor by grouping. You take uh, what is common to the first two terms, take what is common to the second two terms, pull those things out, and you will end up with a common factor. Factor one more time, and you should be done. Yes, it's a little bit of a tedious product process. Yes, uh, there's obviously a lot of steps to it, but number one, some of you are already familiar with this process, and number two, the good thing about this process is if you follow all the steps perfectly and to a T, you will be able to factor uh, most of the quadratics that you encounter on this test in this way. At the top of the next page, we are going to try an example here using the process on the previous page. I would pause the video and try to do example eight on your own. Obviously, you can look back to the previous page. I would definitely recommend following the process step by step. As I said, you got to follow it to a T, and as long as you do, uh, you should be fine. So try number eight on your own when you are done, or obviously if you get stuck, start the video again and join us. So in example eight, what do we have to do? We have to find the solutions to this, what is a, this is actually a cubic. Find the solutions, the values of x that satisfy this equation. So. From the previous page, again, you can flip back there if you need to. We want to rearrange the equation so that everything is on one side and a zero is on the other. So I'm just gonna start by subtracting the nine X from both sides. Let me zoom in here a tiny bit more. We get 12 X cubed plus 12 X squared minus nine X equals zero. So everything is rearranged so that we have a zero on one side and all of our other terms on the other. The next step, step two from the previous page, says to factor out any numbers or variables common to all terms. And of course, here we have an x common to all of our terms. We also have a three common to all of our terms. We can pull a three out of those two 12s and that nine. So we're gonna pull a three x out and then figuring out what we need inside parentheses. Uh, we can either do 12x cubed divided by 3x, or we can figure out what we need to multiply 3x by to get 12x cubed. And of course, that would be a 4x squared. So 3x times 4x squared would be 12x cubed. So that's good. This is just going to be a 4x. Uh, 3x times 4x is 12x squared. Very good. And then minus, it looks like minus 3 there. 3x times negative 3 will be negative 9x. So that all looks good. Uh, what we do next is for the quadratic, we're going to list our values of A, which is four, B, which is four, and C, which is negative three. So A, B, C, we have our values listed. The next thing that we do, of course, is we draw our large X. And remember that in the top quadrant, this is step four by the way, in the top quadrant we write the product AC. In our case, AC, A times C is four times negative three, which is negative 12. And down here in the bottom quadrant, we write 
our B value. Now what we do is we list all of the factors of negative 12. So I am going to, just gonna list the positive factors. So I'm gonna do 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4, and we have to find out which pair is the one that adds or subtracts to the four down here. And of course, that's gonna be the two. And the six, we need to make a negative 12 and a positive four. So it looks like we need a positive six and a negative two. And remember, we're gonna throw an X after each of those. two x times three is positive six x. two x plus three and two x plus three of course is that common factor that we said would be apparent uh, at the end of step seven. So we do see that common factor. And now of course I pull that common factor out. I am going to come up here. Let me give myself a little bit more room. Uh, that's a little bit too much room. There we go. So we've got three x. And then what I'm doing is I'm pulling out that two x plus three from each of these two terms, and I am left with 2x minus one. I am left with this item and this item on the outside. And of course, if I distribute that 2x plus three to the 2x and that 2x plus three to the negative one, I would end up with what I had over here, which resulted from this step and so on and so forth. So everything looks good. And it appears I have just factored completely the original cubic. And now what I do to find these, so these are the factors, these are the three factors, 3x, 2x plus three, and 2x minus one. Uh, now remember, I should actually distribute this and make sure that everything works out uh, well. Uh, 2x times 2x is 4x squared, uh, so 3x is on the outside. So 2x times negative one is minus 2x, three times two x is plus six x, three times negative one is negative three. If I then distribute that three x, I get 12 x cubed. I get negative, uh, actually let me just combine these. So this is just gonna be uh, ne positive four x, positive four x. So that's three x times four x, which is positive 12 x squared, and then three x times negative three, which is negative nine x. And of course on the right, I'd still have that zero, and that does look exactly like what I started with that was the that was the original equation here 12x cubed plus 12x squared minus 9x so the factors are correct these three factors one two three those are correct and remember to find the solutions i can use the zero product property here i can set 3x equal to zero i can set 2x plus 3 equal to zero i can set 2x minus 1 equal to zero uh, obviously over here x is just going to equal zero minus three minus three i get two x equals negative three running out of room here uh, so there x equals negative three halves so i've got a zero i've got a negative three halves and then of course over here plus one plus one two x equals one divide by two divide by two and i get x equals one half so zero negative three halves and one half are my three solutions here zero uh, negative one half and 
uh, sorry, positive one half, positive one half, and negative three halves. I did that a little bit out of order, but that's okay. Uh, and of course, if this were a grid in, somehow the question would restrict you either to the zero and the positive solution, the negative solution could not be uh, possible on a grid in. Now, of course, that process did take uh, several minutes. The more you practice this process, the better you get at it, uh, the more efficient you get at it, the less time it will take. I would say that somebody who's proficient at this process could probably factor this cubic and find the solutions in a matter of a minute or two. It should not take very long to uh, do this process once you're familiar with it. So practice away.